Welcome to another episode of The Brand Called You, a podcast and podcast show that brings you leadership lessons, knowledge, experience, and wisdom from thousands of successful individuals from around the world. I am your host, Ashutosh Garg, and today I'm delighted to welcome a very, very accomplished entrepreneur, a fellow YPOer from California, USA, Mr. Brandon Ball. Brandon, welcome to the show. Thank you so much for having me, Ash. Appreciate it. Uh, Brandon is the founding partner and CEO of Starch Creative. He's also the CEO of Purpose Supply Company, which is uh, Starch Creative is one of the fastest growing agencies in the US. He's a serial entrepreneur. And as I mentioned, he's a fellow member of the YPO. So Brandon, let's start talk about Starch Creative. Tell me about this venture and what was your motivation to start? Yeah, I'd love to. Thanks for asking. Uh, and of course, thank you for having me today. I greatly appreciate it. Starch Creative was founded uh, by myself back in 2015. Mm-hmm. We saw this opportunity to create a home for creatives where everybody could kind of really foster their creative energy and have a safe place mm-hmm. to utilize that skill set that they'd honed in over the years. You know, I, I think constantly about the kid in in sixth grade who sat in the back of the class drawing and, and people would make fun of him for it you know and mm-hmm. his parents said oh no you need to go to school to be a doctor or a lawyer you can't you can't make a career in art and mm-hmm. and that's just simply not true we're we're in such a fortunate place where my my father was a truck driver and my mom was a receptionist mm-hmm. and that's because those are the jobs they had to have okay. and right. over here we get we get paid to come up with ideas, right? We get, we get paid to be creative. And so if we can foster and create an environment where uh, people can grow their careers, build families, have financial stability, that, that's what we want to do. And that's, that was really where a lot of it started for me was how do we have a higher meaning and a way to create more impact on a chemical level and an endorphin level. So mm-hmm. if we're going to do the creative work, Let's, let's make people happy when we do it mm. and let's allow creatives to really shine and flourish in their environment. Amazing. Amazing. And what an incredible story you've had. So, uh, you know, Brandon, I'm much older than you. And I remember, you know, when I started uh, and I used to talk to agencies in the early 80s. Uh, and then, of course, there was this big uh, web series, Mad Men, which really, really <laughs> replicated a lot of what I grew up with in advertising. I'd love to get your perspective on how has advertising and creatives changed over the past decade, few decades? You know, it, agency was a bad word for me. I come from the brand side. I worked brand side my whole career before starting this company. Yeah. And we looked at agencies as a bad word. Just mm. agency was a bad word. So when we founded Starch, mm. the concept was really thinking about ourselves as brand partners. And while I understand that can sound cliche, that was really, truly how we looked at it. We said, mm-hmm. how do we bolt on to the business? Um, with that being said, I think, you know, when you look at the, the TV show, of course, that, that really humanizes the experience. It, it creates a lot of fun around it. Uh, I, I, wish, uh, I wish my experiences were people sitting around, you know, smoking cigars and drinking scotch at two o'clock in the afternoon. But that's not really how it works in our world. That's for sure. I, I agree with you. But, you know, let me come back to your first passion of building brands. So let me ask you a basic question. What goes into building a successful brand? Oh, a loaded question, right? <laughs> yes. We could spend the entire session talking about that. Uh, for, for me, what, what I find to be the most important part about building a brand is creating a product of value right? That your product has to drive value, obviously, for the end user. Mm -hmm. And you as a brand have to find a way to make sure that you are bettering somebody's life, bettering their experience, identifying something within their life that you can enhance. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, there's, there's really no purpose. And that's, I mean, that's just coming from us. That's, that's kind of where we sit. It's no matter whether you're making apparel or footwear or software, you know, and you're, and you're operating in the tech space, Mm -hmm. your, your target goal of being a good brand should be how to make somebody's life better. Mm -hmm. And that's, that's how I look at it. I mean, we could get into the the minutia of how we, as a, as a creative firm, make a better brand, you know, and create brand evangelists, but it only starts with, why don't you tell me about it? Yes. How does creative start (laughs) build a better brand? So we're, we're predominantly focused on retail brands and we are vertically integrated top to bottom from brand campaign and strategy mm-hmm. uh, execution 
through retail store design, all the way through consumer experience and events activation. So we really took a vertical approach to how, how to function uh, in the most impactful way for a retail brand. Mm-hmm. Coming from the retail side and, and a handful of us working on the brand side for so long, we felt this was the best uh, platform to approach it from. So we look at it as whether it's launching the brand in brick and mortar or e or it's pushing out a new product. You know, if your Adidas comes to us and they sign James Harden, they say, mm-hmm. we want to launch James Harden's new shoe. They just signed a $200 million deal with the guy. Mm-hmm. They've got to really put some money behind launching this product. Mm-hmm. And we're the team they come to that say, how do we launch this thing globally at a consistent creative level? Mm-hmm. So our job is then to think about how to globally launch this product, mm-hmm. make it consistent in every single market from APAC to LATAM to North America. Um, and how do we package it for every market to make sure they're overly consistent? Mm-hmm. How do we come up with all the creative ideation? How are we disruptive around the launch? Uh, for that one, we made animatronic heads, giant mm-hmm. six foot animatronic heads that opened up. Mm-hmm. So um, and, and we're completely vertically integrated in that capacity. And, and so we can really take a brand from strategy idea, the data science component of it, all mm-hmm. the way through the creative and the execution. Mm-hmm. And, and this, the sister company that you mentioned, Purpose, is, is just an addition to that vertical integration. So that's a complete fabrication side of the retail sector. Wonderful. So we build all the retail stores and, and uh, fixturing and programs as well. Amazing. And uh, yet there is often this question, Brandon, that is asked that some brand, brands live forever and some die very early. What are your thoughts on what is the consistent input that is needed by a brand? And I've often said brands are like children. You've got to keep nurturing them all the time. But I'd love to get your perspective. Uh, I couldn't agree with that more. And, and it's you, you have to maintain that nurture, but you have to always be innovating and you Mm. have to continuously be looking at what the next generation of consumers is looking for. Mm. We see that a lot with social media Mm. as they age out of a generation and a platform is distinguished for, you know, if we're looking at a a Gen Z as an example, Mm. they're not living on Facebook, right? We all know the difference of the audiences. And so it's, it's to continuously be innovative again, to continuously drive value, but you have to understand what the value is that generation's looking for. Mm. And so for us, when we look at our different brand partners and we dive in and understand their core demographic, mm-hmm. current core demographic, future core demographic, and, and we, we dial in how to speak to each of these markets separately so we can make sure that we're consistently keeping the brand funnel full mm. and equally making sure the brand promise back to these individuals is meeting its expectation. Mm. So, you know, you've got to commit to driving uh, an improvement again in somebody's life. And you've mm. got, you've got to, if they're going to give you their time or their money, mm. you've got to make sure that whatever product you're exchanging with them is going to drive positive value. Amazing. And yet what's also happening is that the medium of communication seems to be changing very dramatically. When I was growing up, there were big billboards and full page newspaper ads that evolved into uh, cinema hall advertising. Today, everything is on, on your handheld device. My question to you, Brandon, is how is the digital world changing brands' communication and the role of brand managers? It, it's definitely a push and pull scenario. Mm. I think for us and, and the clients that we work with, mm. we, we see a lot of wanting to pull back into traditional spaces and traditional type of marketing communication. Mm -hmm. But as we all know, the reality is our attention spans are are only getting smaller and smaller. Correct. And if we really think about what, what the cell phone has done Mm. to how we all function and where we spend our time, I mean, we've turned everything into correct. How do, how do I communicate with the one thing that you're always holding? Mm. you know, consumers. And that's why we see advertising with the social media. Mm. That's, that's why we're finding that because, Print is, is only dead because they don't need it anymore, right? I mean, we don't need, I enjoy print. I love magazines, I love newspapers, but it's not a required medium to your point for an end user. And as the consolidation of streaming services and how we view content has, everything has moved to digital. I mean, I would, I would say that 90% of the brands that we work with outside of the brick and mortar capacity mm-hmm. are thinking about a digital first solution uh, moving forward and what everything that they do, they're thinking digital first. And even for a brick and mortar retail perspective, 
we measure that communication mm. from outside of the four walls. So we're not just looking at what is the revenue per door per square foot. Mm -hmm. We're trying, we're actually measuring what the halo impact is mm -hmm. via digital. How is that driving e-com? And that's how we're communicating. And that's how we'll, you're yeah. following up mm -hmm. as well, right? You're following up with them digitally and, and in their handheld device. Absolutely. And have you also started looking at the metaverse? <laughs> uh, yes. Yeah. Yeah, and, we have. And we have a few few individuals on the team that are far well more metaversed than I am. Okay. Uh, but, but yeah, we do. We, we dabble both in the NFT space mm. um, as well as in that, that side of the UI and Web 3.0 space. It's not our, our forte. I won't speak too much about what we're doing, but I will oh, tell I you we're active. Yes. Absolutely. So we are active. And, absolutely. My next question to you, Brandon, is that, again, when I look back, you know, when one wanted to advertise, one would pick uh, either a Hollywood or a Bollywood celebrity, a film star, or a, a top uh, sports personality to be able to endorse a brand. But in the digital age, there's this huge breed, new breed of influencers that has come in. Uh, I'd love to get your perspective on how are influencers beginning to, if I can use the term again, influence brands. I love it. Mm -hmm. I love the influencer platform. Mm -hmm. you, you can love some of them. You can hate some of them. You know, that's, that's up to you in terms of which ones you identify with Correct. more or less, but I, I think it's fascinating. And the reason I think it's so fascinating is because it's really decentralized where you have to put your focus and energy. I mean, for sake of conversation, if, if you were trying to market a product mm -hmm. 20 years ago, you said, is it an athlete? Mm -hmm. Is it a supermodel? Is it a movie star? I mean, like, you know, you could list on one hand, right? right? Like right. what the five things were mm -hmm. in, in industry. So you, you had a really small pool to pick from. And by mm -hmm. decentralizing and allowing anybody to drive their own influence, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. uh, appropriately named to their own uh, target micro audiences is great. Mm -hmm. I, I, our brands feel traditionally that the larger influencers only drive more PR value necessarily mm -hmm. than revenue or, or mm -hmm. bottom line um, ROI. But focusing highly on micro communities and micro influencers who mm -hmm. have a niche in a market that tie back to what their product, again, is kind of detailed towards, uh, we found great success with. And I think it's fantastic. I, I, I love the influencer market strategy. Amazing. And, uh you know, we spoke a little bit about Facebook and how the Gen Zs, for example, are not coming onto Facebook or looking at Facebook. But yet there is a multiplicity of platforms. You know, there's the Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, et cetera, et cetera. And now there is this huge range of micro platforms like your TikToks and so on and so forth. Uh, how are brands adapting to so many different platforms to be able to consistently give their message? Well, uh, they're, they're realizing the importance of focus, mm -hmm. number one, mm -hmm. the importance of the content creation. Mm -hmm. And you're seeing the budget shift. Right? Mm -hmm. To your point, you're not spending as much money on spots and, and magazine you know, layouts and folds. Mm -hmm. So you're able to take that, that traditional marketing budget and invest it in more content creation because we mm -hmm. have to create more content on a more consistent basis. Mm -hmm. And you have to adapt that content based on the platform, right? So it has to be platform appropriate content as we all know mm. we shouldn't put onto TikTok what you put on facebook mm. um a lot of what we see our brands doing is, is just picking a lane you know mm. there there gets a point where they're like hey we're not going to leverage all six platforms mm. we're going to focus on two or three mm. and the other really big thing and i encourage brands to do this constantly and, and would anybody watching this would encourage them to think about it if they have mm. a brand is focusing on building their own audience, mm. really thinking about customer, customer loyalty platforms and how they're embracing and owning their audience. Mm -hmm. Because at the end of the day, everybody, whether you're doing Roblox or Minecraft or Fortnite, you know, to, to Twitter and TikTok, yeah. you do not own that audience. The platform owns the audience at Correct. the end of the day. Correct. Therefore, you can be leveraged with your platform, with by the platform for your audience. And mm -hmm. so what what we're seeing a lot of the larger brands do is focus on their own consumer loyalty, uh, organic, uh, mm. platforms and brands that aren't doing that really need to start thinking about how they drive to owned audiences. 
interesting uh, my next question to you brandon is on the communication strategies you know uh, in the old days they seem to be all the time in the world to be able to give your message now it seems to be down to 5 seconds and 7 seconds and 10 seconds how are brands managing to communicate their attributes in such a short span of time well they're making up words <laughs> okay. right we, we take three words and we put them into one uh and that's your headline you know uh and it's some sort of uh jam together message no uh it it is it's it's a click mm. and it, it's just a moment and what we found you know even as we're trying to drive social engagement you know you have a shorter amount of time obviously in the feeds than you do um in in any sort of print or headline pr editorial mm. um is it's communicating value and impact mm. again i keep going back to this value conversation because it's so important to me uh immediately it's it's you've got to communicate something that's driving value to the individual they have to see something that means something to them not something that means something to you as a brand mm. so your number one job when you're communicating is to make sure that whatever it is that something that that person believes in or could drive value from mm. um because that's what's going to stop them because as yeah. you know everybody's screaming at them to get yeah. their attention but they're screaming about their own products and they're not actually taking the time to say I got this thing that you need right and that's really where you get the higher conversion and and you're able to capture that attention in a short amount of time and yet you know I was speaking to some brand managers who run large brands uh in the old days again the thing was that if i have a successful brand and i can really sit back and just keep investing more and more in the brand but with social media they seem to be disruptors for every brand and dozens of them so i'd love to get your perspective from a creative uh, agency how does a brand build loyalty especially when it is being attacked by disruptors from not just within your own little market but from around the world That's a good question. So so before I started uh Start Creative, I worked for Vans Footwear for mm -hmm. about 15 years. Right. And I I think that's a really that was a really good time. We were I was there with the brand. We were 300 million and when I left, we were mm. 3 billion. So really really experienced that ride on on the global retail marketing front and mm. what what I what I felt that we did in that time was we understood the competitive set and what was happening around us mm. but we really focused on what made us unique and finding our white space mm. and understanding where there was that the white space being the opportunity mm. of what made us unique consumers wanted mm. and we found that we couldn't be disruptive in that space if we really knew who we were and the value we drove and focusing mm. in on that white space it was our differentiator mm. and as long as we could clearly communicate that to the consumer what what made us different mm -hmm. why were we a unique product mm -hmm. again how we drove value back to them mm -hmm. um it it really helped us propel ourselves forward during that platform and and during that time frame and not focus too much if you spend what's the old saying uh, you know if if you spend too much looking to left and right of you to see where you know who's catching up to you you're going to trip on your own feet so i think a lot of it is is having a solid strategy understanding who your consumer is today who your consumer is tomorrow and committing you've mm -hmm. really got to commit there's there's failing fast which is is okay and and good to do if you mm -hmm. really want to draw a lot of learnings but when you commit to a path and and a message i believe that you really have to uh hold steady on that and and believe that the work you've done to inform that decision is going to prevent anybody else from kind of climbing over the walls and breaking into your castle amazing what a great response and my last question to you brandon and this is for the many many people who will listen to our conversation what would you say are three lessons based on your own vast experience of building brands and running a major creative company what would you you say are three lessons that you would like our viewers and listeners to take away on branding uh, marketing creative ah uh. I I hate giving advice. Um okay. and, and as as a fellow YPO or you probably know why. Absolutely. It's ingrained to us to to share experiences, right? Uh for me personally, some of the best experiences I've had, I would say is one is understanding the value mm -hmm. of having a staff that is very diverse mm -hmm. in every way shape or form and listening to that team. Yeah. 
as as you you made the joke uh, that I'm a lot younger than you, and I look at a lot of my staff and I talk about how they're a lot younger than I am, right. you know. And so, understanding that there are zeitgeist, mm. they really they know what's happening in 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 the world at a level that we don't. Mm. And so it's just it's really just to listen, I guess. Uh, mm. Listen, listening to those around you and understanding that you can drive things from their experience and their lives and what they're doing. I mean, there's, yeah. there's a lot, we don't know what mm. we don't know. And so understanding the value of hearing everybody uh, surrounding yourself with younger people and mm. listening to what's going on right. um, is, is one of them. Um, in, in terms of, uh, in terms of building and running a business, uh, I would have to say that the number one thing I've learned is nobody. And, and I mean, absolutely nobody is untouchable okay. because no matter how, how high, uh, how high you are on the ride, you will be equally as low at some point. And it's mm. about enjoying the journey and just making it through the top and the bottom, mm. no matter what, um, bracing and preparing because, yeah. uh, just when you think everything's great, something like a pandemic can come through, right. And just completely take you out at your knees. Yes. And yes. so, um, you can't think of everything. You won't plan for everything. Um, I feel like everybody's been knocked to their knees at least once and it's Absolutely. understanding that that's part of, part of the uphill climb. It's part of the journey and, and knowing that you can't give up. And as we came into COVID, that was the biggest thing. All, all, all I shared with our staff was we have one job and that's survival, mm -hmm. nothing else. We just have to survive to the other side. And so um, going back, just knowing that, uh, that at any point in time, you can't take any of it for granted because you, mm -hmm. you can get knocked down, but you've got to maintain and be ready to get back up. Fascinating. Fascinating. Brand, on that note, uh, thank you so much for speaking to me. Thank you for talking to me about Starch Creative, about branding, about your amazing journey, about how the entire digital uh, transition the world has seen over the last so many years uh, seems to be really affecting and changing advertising communication creativity. Thank you again for speaking to me and good luck to you. Oh, well, thank you so much for having me. It was a pleasure. And uh, I look forward to watching many more episodes and congratulations on all the success with uh, TVCY. Thank you, wonderful. Thank you for listening to the brand called You Videocast and Podcast, a platform that brings you knowledge, experience and wisdom of hundreds of successful individuals from around the world. Do visit our website www.tbcy.in to watch and listen to the stories of many more individuals. You can also follow us on YouTube, Facebook, Instagram and Twitter. Just search for the brand called You.